So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So I thought I'd just do a little video off, well it'll be probably a little longer one on this one, but uh, I want to show how I build out a batteryless solar system. So in essence, setting up all the circuitry that would be needed to take power off of solar panels and have it fed through and come out to AC power or come out to DC power but not have a battery involved in the system. So I'll just kind of walk through some of the components I'll be using in this video. So if you've watched the previous um, solar generator build that I did, I showed in detail how I connected on MC4 connections to wires. So if you don't know how to make those connections, uh, you might want to go back and watch that video to see detailed breakdown of exactly how that's done. But these connections are used to plug in my solar panels too. So this will be the power in. Now this unit right here is a DC to DC converter. It's a step down converter. So what that means is this can take 24 volts coming in and it's really flexible. This unit can take anywhere from, I believe it was 18 up to about 30 volts coming in on the, uh, on the intake lines and spits out 12 volt power that's been kind of stepped down to the 12 volts um, and regulated to that, if you will, um, through this device. So it's really simple. I've got a positive and a negative that come off my solar panels. That'll be coming in at about 19, 20 volts DC. And then it'll step down and come off the 12 volt negative, And this is a 12 volt positive. So this unit I'll be attaching to the board. And like I say, I'll just be connecting my solar panels onto here. And then I've got... A DC fuse block similar to the one that I used in my solar generator build that involved the battery and that just a more compact version because I'm not looking at using this to produce output power quite as high as I would off of my solar generator I can shift this all down to a smaller unit more compact that type of thing but the thinking really will be I'll have my the buck converter these are called dc to dc converter i'll use my buck converter and i'll hook it up to the negative bus bar on this fuse block and up to the positive to run through the fuses to feed off to devices and then i've got a small 150 watt ac inverter which will convert the dc power that flows through my um fuse block It'll flow through and convert it off to wall power and off to USB. So I'll have the capacity to um, run or charge from either one of these uh, inputs, if you will, or outputs. And they'll be wired into the fuse block. So I'll just lightly set that back on there. And then I also have a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug adapter that will be wired into the fuse block as well. So once these are all wild, wired up, like I say, I'll be able to then use either 12 volt cigarette lighter or AC, that type of thing, but with no battery. So the only kind of real weakness to this system is the fact that you need to have the solar panels producing good amperage coming in in order for this unit to be effective. So when the sun goes down and that type of thing, this isn't going to work, you know, but it is good in the reality of if I've got solar panels with me and I'm not, I don't want to have to worry about the expensive costs of, you know, um, the, the lithium iron phosphate batteries and those types of things. This whole setup is maybe about a hundred dollars. This unit was about 25. This was about $20. This was a $25 unit. And I think this was 15 bucks. And then I've got the connectors and wires and stuff. So, you know, it's lightweight. The whole thing will only weigh maybe about two pounds, three pounds. It's small, compact, and uh, it'll serve purpose for me when, ideally, when I'm out in the backcountry and I don't want to drag along the solar generator, I'll have this unit thrown into the back of my truck. And when I put some flexible solar panels, which you might have seen in previous videos of mine being used, when I put that up on the roof of the truck, I'll just feed the wires in and have the solar panels feeding directly into here, where it gives me the ability in the truck 
to just, when the sun's up, I've got power and can do things with it. So I'll just get on with it and start putting together the build here. I'll just kind of cut scenes and, and switch angles and start to get this whole build going, yeah? Okay, so first order business, I'm going to take this DC to DC converter, the buck converter. I'm just going to strip off a bit more of the wire because uh, they didn't really expose a huge lead coming off it to begin with. I just I like to have a little bit extra metal exposed to make sure that I'm doing good connection with the terminals when I get to that point. So I'll try to keep my mess to a dull roar, but such is life, right? So the thinking really is I'm taking number 10. I've got some ring terminals here that I'll be attaching on. So I simply want to just set those in place make sure that I'm making good contact with the wires. I'm going to slide, there's a yellow on the crimping tool and it'll match up to the yellow uh, of the device or of the terminal that I'm using. And uh, those are number 10s. They color coat them in different colors so you can know which crimp is the appropriate one. So the thinking really is I want to do a really solid crimp on there. Make sure that these ring terminals aren't going anywhere. So I'll kind of move it back a bit and do it back on the plastic sheeting that's covering the wire. I give it a good pull. I want to make sure that, yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's connected solid. I'll do the same now with the positive where I'm just making sure I see just the tip of the metal coming through of the wire. So I want just the tip of that showing through so I know I'm going to make good connection. I'll set it down to the yellow again, like, like I said, and give it a good solid squeeze and then I want to kind of just step back a bit I really like to make sure that when I'm crimping I do press it right back along the plastic sheath and everything just to make sure it kind of hugs the wire everything's on there really solid <clears throat> so that's on there good it's not going anywhere so now when it comes to this DC to DC um, converter I really want to have this kind of in a bit because I want these MC4 connections to be kind of tucked back on the on the ends here I don't want them hanging out too much because if they get caught on stuff and that type of thing later on I'll use some cable clamps to kind of clamp them down to help keep them to the inside of the board if you will but uh, I'm just I think this will be kind of a reasonable location I'll probably have my MC4s coming off here and clamped and uh, have it where the wires should be amply enough to feed off to the negative bus bar and the fuse block. So I seem to have lots of room. This looks like a good position. So I'll just kind of square it up so it looks like it's in line. And then I'll just take a couple of screws now. I really just want to screw this unit down to the wooden board. You know, and depending on how thick the plywood is and stuff, you'll have to determine whether you're going to use three quarter inch or half inch or, you know, what the size of your screws and stuff if you plan on doing this yourself. But as you can see, it's fairly straightforward. There's not a lot to it. This will just make sure that it's good and braced to the board. It's not going anywhere. All right. So now that my DC to DC converter is kind of set and stable, like I say, it's not going anywhere. Now I just want to determine where I'm going to put my fuse block. Now, I'm going to have, I'll just grab my multi-tool because it's close to hand, but I know I should be using the proper tools for the job and blah, 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 but I am a bushcraft guy primarily, so to me, I like to just kind of get it done. So I'll just loosen those off. Now there's some washers that are going to sit on these terminals. I just want to get them off easy enough where I can 
and turn them with my hands. And there we go. Okay, so I simply want to just kind of spin the nuts off, get the washers and all that off. I might as well do the same to the other side. So now I'm going to figure out where I want to position this uh, negative bus bar and fuse block. And I want to have it where I do have a bit of room that if I want to cable clamp down um, any of the wiring, I can do it on the inside of the boards. I don't want to have wires being exposed to the outside. So I do want to have this kind of fairly close to... So here, let me just throw the washer on. Kind of get a feel for... How is this thing going to sit? Do the same on this side. Toss on a washer. And then set that on. I probably could have gone a size smaller when it comes to these ring terminals, but such is life, right? It's what I had available, so that's what gets used. But when it comes to you know, the amperage that's going to be flowing through this thing, I'm not worried about you know the cables too much and that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's really not going to be high enough amperage flowing through this unit to be of concern of melting wires and that type of stuff. So I'll just toss my washer on, my slip ring, and my other nut. And these things will all get tightened down as we go, but I just want to make sure everything's kind of hooked on and braced before I decide where I want to set this. Come on now. It's always when it's on camera, right? All the time. Of course. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So I'm on enough to just kind of hold on to things. But now I want this kind of, like I said, I want this kind of pinched back in a bit. And to ensure that I'm going to have enough board to kind of put any wire clamps on that, I, that are needed. And then I'm just going to set that down. I think this, this looks like a half decent position. Kind of gives me a bit of room. Yeah, it'll be a bit tight for the ones coming on this side, but in fact, I might even just kind of turn that a bit. Just to give a bit of room. I don't know. Nah, I'll just square it up. It'll be fine. Like I say, there's no exact science to when it comes to the position and placement of things. You just got to be conscious when you're doing this kind of stuff that, you know, you've got enough room for your wires to flow and you're not kind of pinning yourself in where you're not going to be able to use different components because it's, you know, all too tight together and that kind of stuff, right? Now, that one should be good enough. All right, so it's just that simple. I'll have to uh, get a proper wrench here and tighten these down. So I'll just go grab my wrench, tighten this down and bolt it and then I'll move on to the next steps, yeah? But, uh, but that's the thinking really is I just wanna kinda set and lock that all in nice position. So I'll bolt these down, I'll cut back and we'll move on to the next, step, next steps, yeah? All right, so like I said, I just went and tightened down these two bolts and that way everything's kind of locked. And you want to check to make sure everything's nice and firm, right? It's not going anywhere. I'm okay with that. So then I'm just going to grab one of my cable clamps here. And I believe I can pinch these both off. I might have to do them separately, but I just want to take my two solar connections and kind of figure out where I want those. Well, there seems good. Gives me enough room to hook onto them, but still kind of keeps it on the wood, if you will. So I like that. That kind of spot seems acceptable to me. So I'll just grab a slightly bigger screw here. Actually, I should be able to just use these through. Be easy enough. 
Might even need a washer. We'll see. Eh, we should be okay. So, like I say, I want to just kind of have it where I know I can still easily, you know, clip in my solar panels and that type of thing, but I'll brace that down. Just make sure that the cables, you know, they're not really going anywhere. Like I say, I can still bend them to connect on my solar panels easy enough, but either way, it's kind of braced. I know it's not going to put any tension if I yard on these accidentally. It's not going to put any tension on these connection points into the DC to DC converter, and that's really the key part to me. So when it comes to the next step now, I'm going to take my I'm going to take my inverter. Now, I don't want this cigarette plug on the end of the inverter, so I'm going to strip that off and get rid of it and get down to the raw wires. Now, you can see this unit was just kind of a plastic casing. Now, when it comes to which one's negative and which one's positive in this scenario, so I'm going to turn around and see the middle wire that's running up through the center that's going to be your positive so i'm going to just kind of pull that uh, i might even have to snip it off let's see if i can just get that out of there all right so i'll pop that off now i'm going to leave the terminals on the negative for a minute because i want i don't want to confuse which one's my negative and which one's my positive here love but Normally on these wires, you'll see some sort of differential on the wire itself to help you determine. And these wires don't have that, unfortunately. But either way, I'm just kind of, I know this is my positive. So I'll just work on the positive first. And that way I don't confuse them later on in time. So I'm going to just strip off a bit of the wire. Expose some of the of the wire casing and expose some of the wires. Now I'm going to use spade terminals that are going to connect onto this fuse block. So and I've got number 10 spade terminals. Hopefully the camera's picking that up all right. Number 10 spade terminals there. And just like I did with the ring terminals. In fact, I'm just going to, I've got a bit of wire here, so I'm just going to kind of fold that back on itself to give it a bit extra width, if you will. But just like I did with the ring terminals, I want to kind of set that in so I see a bit of the copper wire sticking out the other side. I'm going to take my crimping tool, slide it on. I want to give that a good solid crimp. Come on. And of course, I'm making a dog's breakfast of it. Just made a mess of it. Hold on. I'll just straighten this out a bit. Yeah, it really made a rat's ass of that one. So I'll just get rid of that terminal. That's fine. These things happen sometimes, you know. You go to connect on the terminal, it just doesn't set on right. And that kind of thing, but easy enough. Just make sure my wires twisted up good. You see, set that in where the copper is just sticking out the end. I think I accidentally did it sideways when I set it on. There we go. That's a bit better. Like I say, sorry about that. Just in a rush to get this made, so making silly mistakes, but such is life. All right, so and I'll test that. Yeah, it's on there really good and solid now. So now I'm just gonna grab my screwdriver, and I need a 
different head on it. So I've got 20 amp fuses here. And I know this 150 watt inverter isn't going to end up using that level of capacity one way or the other. So I should be safe to connect on to the 20 amp fuse. Just kind of loosen it off a bit. I'm going to take the positive off my DC to AC inverter and just slide that in underneath the washer. And make sure I'm 90 degrees to the fuse box. In fact, I'm going to do it over on the other side. Sorry, guys. I'll just set that down. Because I know I'm going to have my AC inverter on this side and my DC cigarette lighter adapter. So I'm just going to kind of switch the position of which wire or where I'm going to put this wire. So I'm going to just hook this in on this side. Tighten that down. Make sure the connection's good and solid. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. And when it comes to this negative part now, I'll start to work on that. And I'll end up breaking this unit off entirely, just so you're aware as we go. But uh, let me just grab my snippers here. I know I should be using the proper tools and all that, but like I say, I'm just kind of a get her done kind of guy. But so I give myself a bit more spare wire. And I'm going to bring this around because I want to keep the wires, like I say, to the box. So I'll just strip this off. Still got a bit of the old one in there. Be yet another spade terminal. fold over the wire just to give it a bit of extra thickness on the end it's not critical but these gauge wires aren't really that high gauge so just to make sure that they have lots to bite onto if you will I don't mind there we go yeah, made a bit of a chewed rat's ass on that as well but such as life. <clears throat> now I want that to connect on to the negative bus bar. So I'll just loosen one of those. Get in underneath the washer with the spade terminal. I want to make sure I'm good in 90 degrees coming off of it. So when I put my cap on, there's no issues later on. Simply tighten that down. There, I'm on nice and tight. Just make sure that one was good and tight, yeah. All right, so that wires me in now for the AC inverter. Now, I, want, I do want to kind of keep the wires away from things. So I'm gonna probably clamp the wire down on this side and clamp the wire down on this side with some of those cable clamps just to kind of keep things clean and out of the way of the fuse block and the negative bus bar. So I'll kind of set that about there maybe. I even give it out a bit. And this is really just to keep the wires away from this fuse block. I don't want to have wires touching each other accidentally and that type of thing. So I just want to make sure that when I go to hook on other wires in the future, this area is kind of open and free to make my connections and that kind of thing. It's definitely not elegant when it comes to the look of it, that's for sure. But functionally speaking, I'm just making it simpler for myself down the road, really.
And like I say, that'll just help keep the wires kind of flowing and out of the way. <clears throat> now, when it comes to this AC inverter, there is no mounting bars and stuff. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to snap off this plastic sheath that's on here. So I'll, I'll cut scenes. I'm just going to break this off so I can get this off the cable. And then when it comes to the AC inverter, in order to mount this, because there is no mounting stuff, I'm going to drill a couple holes. I'm going to mark some spots and drill some holes and then just zap strap this AC inverter right onto the board. So let me cut scenes, deal with that. And, uh, I'll, I'll come back and kind of carry on the build, yeah? Okay, so I just broke off that plastic sheath piece that was for the 12 volt. So I'm going to figure out roughly where I want to position this inverter. And then how I'm going to set my cables. So I might even end up taking another one of these cable clamps and clamping this down kind of to the outside. Just to kind of keep everything away from that fuse block. But if I'm going to do that, I want to make sure that I can still position my uh i can still position my inverter and give myself enough room to put in my cigarette lighter adapter and that kind of stuff and i think that's roughly how things are going to lay as i go so what i'll do is i'm just going to come along and like i say none of this is exact measurements or science or anything i'm going to uh probably position my inverter say around here and i'll put a hole here in the wood and a hole here I'm going to do roughly the same on the other side. And there's going to be a hole there and a hole there. So I'll uh, just go off and drill four holes in the wood to set my zap straps in to kind of brace this to the board. So I won't bother filming that part. I'll just go off and drill that and then I'll come back when I'm ready to kind of zap strap down the inverter. Okay, so like I said, I went off and drilled the holes. I just figured it wasn't bother worth showing that on the video, but I'll grab a couple zap straps now. Just pull a couple over here. Now, I know that these zap straps aren't quite long enough, so I'm just going to daisy chain them. Make sure it's locked. Snub off any of the extra spare bits. And then, the thinking really is, I'm just try to keep all this in camera but I'm just gonna end up feeding these in through and back out now when it comes to this I'll just set it in Okay, that one's clamped on. Kind of tighten that one. I think it's going to be about, uh, before I go getting too firm with it, it's going to be about there. Now I'll end up doing the same again. And maybe I won't clip these as quick. <laughs> Just make sure I'm locked on enough to kind of feed it through, but feed this one through the next hole do the same thing again and that way this side can lock in there we go and I'll pull that tight and I'm just gonna crank on that to make sure it's on there as tight as I can get it there we go. Do the same with the first one I sent in. Every click is a little bit tighter, right? Yeah, so that's on there. It's not going anywhere. I'm okay with that. So I'll turn around and just clip off the little hanging bits. even have to get a different tool to get a little closer so it's annoying later on in time if these little sharp edges end up catching you 
I've had that in the past and always annoying. But one way or the other, my AC is on there now. So and then like I say, I do want to kind of keep a bit of distance here. So maybe I'll grab one more of these. Little cable lamps. Kind of see pull that back and set it out of the way a bit. I wonder if I can even hook both of those. Oh. Just to kind of keep it away from the fuse block. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It's not ideal. Like I say, I know this wiring is a bit of a mess, but in fact, I'll even tuck that one underneath. But to me, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be practical. All right, that kind of sets things in place. Now I've kind of locked in my AC inverter, so I'm happy about that. And the next step will be this cigarette lighter adapter. And I've used these, I used this in my previous build and I really, I'm not the biggest fan of these um, cigarette lighter adapters to start with. But uh, this make specifically, I'm not the biggest fan of. This was Blue Hive, I believe they call themselves. And uh, the last one was totally faulty that I installed on the um, solar generator video that I made. And I ended up having to replace it all together. They didn't um, brace down the inner tube properly. And the whole inner tube came out, which is your negative connection. And uh, yeah, it just, it just didn't work out favorably for me. But... Um, this one I checked to make sure it didn't seem to have the same manufacturing flaw. It still holds on to the inner tube solid and that kind of thing. And I did remove the doors off them because I found the spring-loaded doors that they had on them were so tight and then so springy, if you will, that when the door um, wanted to close on itself when you had things plugged in, it was applying so much tension on the input plug that it was causing the connections not to be that good. So... Like I say, I wasn't really the biggest fan of all of those things, but, you know, as I move through time, if I end up coming across better um, DC cigarette plugs, I'll end up using those instead. But, so I really just want to kind of figure out where I want to position this. I want to have all my um, outputs, if you will, all on the same side. So, you know, this this area looks reasonable. I might even give it a bit more space off. I potentially could put some XT60 um, connections on or that kind of thing where if I want to hook up different types of devices, but that might be in a future video. To me, the USB, the AC, and the cigarette lighter adapter are kind of standard plugs that I like to have in my circuitry. So they're always kind of the first to go in. So, but I'll just kind of brace the screw down. That looks like a half decent location. And just screw down this entire 12 volt thing. And because of the nature of the cigarette lighter plugs, I really like to try to make sure that these things are solid and well braced. So I don't mind adding in extra screws to help ensure that that's the case, if you will. They can see a lot of torque tension on them compared to other style connections. I really do like the XT60 connections that they use in drones and you know model cars and those types of things far better than these, but I'll probably do future videos of switching all my stuff over to them at some point in time, but I mean, we'll see as time goes on. So I'm just gonna strip the wire off a bit. Give me some cleaner connections now with the 12 volt. It was easy enough to know which one was negative and which one's positive. 
just by the color coding that they've supplied. And it'll be the exact same again. I'm gonna grab some spade connectors that I have. And uh, just crimp those on and put them in place. And I've been known to use pliers instead of crimping tools quite often in the past, but I'm trying to do a better example when I do videos of, <laughs> you know, the way things more, the way things should be done, not the way I would do them. <laughs> now, when I'm out in the field and that kind of stuff, I just use whatever tools I have available to me. You know, as long as they do the job, I'm happy. But, uh, you know, when you're doing YouTube videos and you're wanting to show people, you really should do things the proper method and all the blah, blah, blah. But I'm a little bit of a savage that way, I guess. I can say, one of the really important things though is, oh, see, it looked like it was on solid in every way and it just wasn't. And that's why you need to stop and check all your connections. It's the same with the negative. Yeah, the negative's on good and solid, but, you know, it looked like it was on in every way and it wasn't. So, luckily enough, I got more of them kicking around, so let's just grab another one. But, and I really don't like using these speed connectors, but when you're wanting to connect into the fuse blocks and that type of thing and have, you know, proper fuses set up so you're not blowing stuff, and it's, uh, yeah. I even flattened my wire when I put it in, but it just wouldn't go in. I hate it when this kind of stuff happens. But, okay, I can see the copper sticking out the end again, so. give this another go definitely seem to have had bad luck in this video when it comes to the terminal connections but such is life like I say I won't edit any of that stuff out I just leave it all in because these are things that happen in life when you go but yeah that one seems far better now good but it's better to really make sure that everything's connected solid to begin with so like i say with the dc i think i already loosened this one off earlier in the video so i want to get in underneath that washer if i can i might need to loosen that a bit more So I'm in underneath the washer. I want to be 90 degrees now to the box. I forgot to mention that in the previous video. I get lazy with that sometimes. You know, you just stuff them in and screw them down. But when you put these caps back on, where's the cap at? When you put the cap back on, there's really not a lot of space that are on the side openings. You know, so you really want to make sure that everything's kind of cleanly on 90 degree angles. So when you put your cap back on, it all sits on nicely and stuff. And it's, it's just the nature of life, right? But uh, you got to do the same with the negative now. Just connect that all up. Try to get in under that washer. seem to be in pretty solid so I'll just tighten that down all right so I'm all wired up now I'll take my box uh, the negative bus bar will have the clear windows to kind of go that way so you know which way to go and all my fusings, I talked about the proper fuse sizes and stuff in the solar generator build, but there we go. So that's all there. Now let's see if I can do another wire clamp. 
You might even do two of them, depending on how long these go. Yeah, it's not the most delicate or you know elegant, but but yeah, the thinking really is I want to just clamp these wires down as well, so that they're all kind of braced. Like I say, I know it looks like a bit of a wired mess because, well, it is. I didn't do the most elegant wiring in this video, but uh, like I say, to me, it was more just getting this thing built. I wanted to have this up and running for over the next couple days. The weather's going to be good, and I wanted to do some solid testing when the sun's out, if you will. You know, make hay when the sun shines, as they say. But, uh, so I'll just ground this or uh, clamp this last wire set in so that they're all braced to the board. Come on now. do this last one by hand because the screws I had I had all Phillips head and these aren't so when I ran out of the Phillips head ones I had to switch over you yeah. and I just didn't want to switch the heads of my drill and everything to do one you know but there you have it so the wiring's done now so as part of the next scenes I'll take this out and plug it into some solar panels and then we'll throw a load onto these and you can see this functioning um, out in the sun yeah Okay, so I guess before we go dragging this thing outside and hooking on the solar panels, we'll just walk through it again one more time. So I've got the MC4 um, connectors that connect off to my solar panel. This feeds through a 24 to 12 volt DC converter. Quite often these are called a buck converter. And this is designed to handle up to 480 watts. So the input voltage, I do believe, is anywhere from 18 to 30 volts, which is ideal for when it comes to the solar panel. And the output voltage, it'll step down to 12 volts and it'll increase the amperage. So I actually get an amperage boost that's being fed off to my 12 volt devices by the dropping of the voltage that comes in here. So it's not just lost voltage, you actually see an increase. So you know, I've seen YouTubers out there where they turn around and directly connect 12 volt appliances up to their solar panels. And that's not really the right thing to do. You're not, for one, it's hard on the equipment because you're using higher voltage than the equipment is rated at normally to work with. And, um, uh, for two, you're not getting the average gain by the proper step down. So, you know, these units are durable. They've got built in over current protection, over voltage protection, all that kind of stuff is built right into them. They're weatherproof. They're long lasting units, really. But uh, like I say, they're ideally suited for this kind of application because the voltage coming in off of the solar panels quite often is far higher than 12 volts that is needed to be driving your appliances. So, but... Needless to say, the 12 volt output that comes out of these devices then gets fed in through the positive and the negative where we go into the positive on the fuse block and the negative on the negative bus bar. And that really allows us to just ensure that if any of these units um, had a spike in current that were going through them that it's not going to flow back and destroy any circuitry or anything and putting in these fuses just makes sure that if there is spikes in current that it's not going to do damage to the entire system it kind of isolates it back to the fuse so that's really why when it comes to any type of 12 volt connections it's good to have the fuses connected to them and normally you would connect on i might even have to switch these up i've got to stop and actually think about what the amperage is that i'm pulling off of my inverter but uh normally uh, whatever the amperage demand is that your um, 12 volts you know load is is pulling you want to take the fuses at 1.25 so one and a quarter above whatever it is yeah, so if these were pulling 100 amps, which obviously in this scenario it's not, but just to keep the math simple, if this item was pulling 100 amps, 
I would want to have a 125 amp fuse that was sitting in line. And that's really just the kind of basic standard to go with. So whatever the amperage draw is like that you'll be pulling off of any of your 12 volt devices, the, the expected uh, amperage load that you're expecting, make sure that you step up your fuses to be 1.25 to set into here and it should all work and you should have no issues that kind of thing right but needless to say the power is going to flow from the solar panels through the dc to dc converter it's going to go through the fuse block and the negative bus bar and then out to our devices and then like i say when it comes to the devices now i have a one amp and a 2.1 amp usb plug and then i've got uh, 110 volt 60 hertz ac output here and that has a capacity up to 150 watts and then when it comes to this 12 volts um, cigarette lighter plug-in um, the line amperage is rated for this unit was rated for 15 amps so you know uh, to step up uh, 1.25 I round it up and take it up to the 20 amp fuse, which is what I'm running in here now. And uh, when it comes to the 150 watt inverter, I believe that sits at about uh, uh, 12 or 15 amps. Like I say, I'll go back and work the math, but I believe a 20 amp fuse is the right fuse. And that's the one I have set in place right now. And if it's not, and I need to step it up, I'll just switch up to a 25 amp fuse here to make sure everything's okay. When it comes to the wiring, I know compared to the solar generator, the wiring's a bit of a fuddled mess when it comes to how it lays out here, but really I'm not concerned. This is a unit now, you can see it's lightweight enough, I can hold it in one hand. And this unit's designed primarily for me to just toss into the back of my truck and gives me the ability where even if I don't have batteries that I'm bringing along with me or, or batteries fail on the systems that I'm using, I can fall back to this and have some form of power supply. You know, and I plan on using this in future soon coming videos and with other technologies I have, which uh, I don't really want to talk about too much in this video, but, but that's the intention really of this item was built for a specific purpose to really give me, like I say, lightweight capability to go all the way from solar panels out to AC power and to be light enough where I'm holding this in one hand with ease that, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So, but like I say, I'll, I'll cut it here. Then we'll grab the solar panels, we'll take it out into the field, and uh, I gotta think about a couple of devices I can bring along with me. I know I've got um, this little cigarette lighter adapter plug, which, you know, generally speaking, just plugs into a cigarette lighter adapter, but uh, it's got a USB, but I don't really wanna use that. Uh, I will uh, just for the example testing, but that's not primarily why I have this on here. And, um, to work with my solar cookers and 12 volt appliances and stuff is really why I have that. But uh, we'll bring this out into the field, plug in some solar panels, put a few loads on it to make sure that everything's working as expected. And then I'll see this video is wrapped up. But, uh, but yeah, this is the kind of core of a batteryless solar system where you can scale this up. You can get larger wattage DC to DC um, converters. You can get uh, uh, larger, you know, um, uh, fuse boxes and, and bus bars and that kind of thing. You can sw obviously switch up to larger inverters and that kind of stuff. But I really scaled this because I know that my solar panel that I plan on having these uh, this unit connected to is a 175 watt solar panel. <clears throat> normally you're not going to get a full 175 watts out of that you know when it's when it's running it's just it's just that simple you get losses that go on through things but the solar panels themselves i find generally speaking don't normally produce the full rated power that they state so even though it's a 175 watt solar panel if i produce 140 150 watts out of that in full sun i'll be happy with the performance but incidentally enough, this is a 150 watt inverter. So really that solar panel could potentially produce the maximum amount of output that this inverter or that this cigarette lighter adapter um, is gonna is gonna offer. And with this DC to DC converter, it really is overkill. It's 480 watt uh, unit. So potentially if I hooked up um, 
beyond 175 if I hooked up a larger wattage coming in and wanted to run both the inverter at max and the DC I know you know and the DC cigarette lighter output I know that this DC to DC converter can handle that future potential capacity need, if you will. So, like I say, I know I'm kind of rambling at this point. Let's get this out into the field and plug a few things and show you how it works, yeah? So, all right, guys. So, I just came out into a parking lot that's near my home of the sun. We're in the afternoon now, and the sun at my location at my residence um, doesn't get a lot of good sun, direct sunlight on my location for the time of day it is. We're kind of past peak, if you will. So I just thought I'd kind of bring the flexible solar panel here, which if you've watched previous videos of mine, you might have seen them. And all I've done now is I turned around and uh, hooked the MC4 connectors directly onto my unit here. And hopefully the camera's picking that up. You can see the red light here. It tells me the AC is on. So I don't have a lot of extensive loads with me, but I do have... You know, like a razor, I'll just plug this into the AC now. And we'll just pop that on of, as you can tell, I'm able to run small devices easily. So the AC is working fine. No problems in that regard. So I'll just unplug that for a second. I'll grab, I've got uh, a cable to plug in my phone. I just grabbed a couple of devices to bring along with me. I'll do further load testing in future videos probably when it comes to using this, but I'll just plug in my uh, USB. Oh, sorry, I'm doing everything with my left hand here, but I'll just plug everything in to kind of give it uh, a test to make sure that it's all working well. And sorry about the poor camera work, but I'm just holding the GoPro in my hand, if you will. So you just heard my phone bing. It's taking a charge now. So that's all coming directly from the solar panels. So I'm able to charge devices. I'm able to run small level AC devices, you know, that kind of thing. So I'll to test the conductivity of the DC cigarette lighter adapter. I'll just plug in this little USB adapter that I have. As you can see, the light came on. And I'll just switch over and plug in my phone to that. And hopefully the camera picked up the bing but uh, taking a charge there. So it's good. Uh, like I say, with small devices like this, I can run, you know, more than one at a time, obviously, of when I can run a razor and charge my phones and those types of devices. But like I say, the good part about this setup is there is no battery involved. So, you know, when it comes to um, batteries, life cycles and all that kind of shenanigans, that can all become a thing of the past. And when it comes to items like my 12 volt um, appliances that I can use, like cooking pots and those types of things, I can run those directly off of this setup without any batteries involved at all. I simply just plug my 12 volt, you know, pots and pans and those types of things right into my 12 volt adapter and I'm good to go. So like I say, I'm pretty pleased. I'm glad that the wiring all worked out. And like I say, just to confirm, the red light there on the cigarette lighter adapter tells me the power is flowing through. So right now, this 175 watt solar panel is probably producing about 130 watts or so. So, you know, which is, like I say, we're getting up to the peak of what this inverter could handle. Potentially, if I had two of these flexible solar panels strapped up to the roof, I don't know if I got the real estate for it or not, but potentially if I had two of those strapped up to the roof, I'd be able to um, run full loads on the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter adapter and full loads on the inverter at the same time. And like I say, the only real downside to this whole setup is the reality of, because there is no battery, this only works in full size sun so but I'm of the approach of all like I say I'll have this unit probably mounted and strapped into the back of my truck somewhere you know along the sides and stuff I've got bedding and everything if you've seen in previous uh, uh, my previous videos of urban stealth camping and that kind of stuff I use my truck a fair bit for it's got a bed in the back and stuff that I've put in and uh, if you want to know further details about that um, go watch the urban stealth camping uh, truck video I did I did one in a car and one in a truck but uh, but it just uh, allows it where 
like I say, I can have AC and DC power now in the back of my truck indefinitely. The thinking really will be, I'll just strap some of that flexible solar panel I'll end up mounting onto the top. I'll feed the wires in through and just have this little device, like I say, mounted to the wall. And uh, it just gives me kind of uh, electrical capacity without any batteries and all that kind of stuff. I could wire in batteries and those types of things to this type of setup, but to me, that's not what this is for. This is really for ultra lightweight. Like I say, this thing weighs maybe two or three pounds. Like it's really light and it's easy for me to pick it up. And uh, I really like that aspect of things. As soon as you get into batteries, you get into weight. It's almost unavoidable, but uh, there you have it as you can see the batteryless solar generator system seems to be working fine no issues uh, like i say i'll try to dig out my 12 volt cooking appliances and those types of things and see if i can just use this setup to um, start cooking meals when i'm out in the woods without any batteries and stuff and we'll see how that all goes but that'll all be future videos coming but uh, if you enjoy this type of content please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching. Cheers.